Barbara Jennings here and welcome back to my YouTube channel is if this is your first time joining us, we welcome you our channel is all about short sales, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that you want to know, the benefits of doing a short sale, or things to avoid when doing a short sale, what to watch out for if you're buying a short sale. Uh, our channel is the uh, short sale advisors and real estate consultants. Uh, we're here to provide great information, updated information weekly. Uh, so remember to uh, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you get notified every single time that we put new videos out because we're getting new um, information every week and we're going to be sharing that with you guys on this channel. So if that's you, uh, remember to tap that subscribe button and click the bell. And at the end of the video, if you like all the information uh, that I've been sharing with you, go ahead and smash the like button so uh, I can help my algorithms and get my video out to more people like yourself that need help, that are wanting to know more information about short sales, the updated, not way back in early 2000, but what's going on today in today's market. There's market updates, all kinds of great stuff. So if there's any types of questions or comments or anything, just um comment below or just give me a call but in today's video we are going to be talking about what a buyer should expect when doing a short sale so first and foremost when you are doing a short sale uh, making an offer on a short sale property you want to make sure that you're working with an agent on the other side that knows what they're doing that have all their ducks in a row that the short sale paperwork um that they've got authorization forms they've gotten some paperwork into the bank a complete package into the bank and also if you're working with me on one of my short sales in the mls you'll find there's a little tab with documents i tell you exactly what you need to do uh, to get your offer um, to us in a complete package so that we can submit it to the bank because we're not fooling around um, and piecemealing stuff to the bank. They don't like it. They're just going to reject our file and or worse yet, put it at the bottom of the pile. And we don't want that for the homeowner or we don't want that for you as the buyer. So if you're uh, writing an offer with another agent on our short sales, there are some guidelines and some things that that particular age, your agent is going to share with you, or if you're working with me, I'm going to share with you what the bank is um, anticipating and what they like to see in the contracts. Um, so they do like things a certain way. There's certain verbiage that needs to be added to these contracts, and we don't want to get down the road 45, 60 days or you know, even two weeks from now, and they give it back to us and we have to make some changes with the buyer, then the seller, then get it back to the bank. We've lost a week or two just there because people did not follow the instructions. So very, very important if you are a buyer and you're working um, on making an offer on a short sale, you need to make sure that you're working with somebody um, that knows what they're doing, first off. So if you're looking to hire a real estate professional to buy a short sale, make sure that they know the ins and outs of the short sale and how important it is to get all the documentation, that contract, the EMD check or the confirmation that the money's been wired, um, all the addendums, the short sale information, the arm's length transactions, like the list just goes on and on. So you need to know what kind of paperwork you need to submit to these banks in order for, first of all, an agent like myself to take the offer um, and get it signed by the seller. Because if I've got more than one offer and your offer is not complete and I have to wait a day or two, I'm gonna be going to the seller and I'm gonna be saying, hey, we got all these offers. And, you know, Joe over here, you know, he's missing some documentation. He said he was getting it to me, you know, but hey, we can't wait. Um, we've got these other offers in hand. So the seller is going to make a decision for themselves whether they want to make, wait for you. It's not me. It's the seller, you know. So if they've got something in hand that's complete and they know because I've been advising and cons consultating with them about how important to have a complete package is that they're going to take somebody else's offer over yours. So just a fair warning, 
make sure whether you're working with us or you're working with somebody else that you have a complete package with all the documentation in one email, one simple email so that listing agent can get it over to the seller and then the seller can sign and get it back to the bank in a timely fashion. We're not piecemealing stuff. So that is the foundation, complete package with everything all in one email, not 10 different attachments. We need everything in one clean PDF. In today's technology, it is very simple um, to have everything in one nice downloadable PDF that's not so huge that it's a Google Drive. You know, we're not taking that either. So <laughs> I'm not being harsh. I'm just telling you the reality of what it is like once these short sales start coming on the market and we're dealing with more than one offer, more than one short sale. Um, we're dealing with REO properties and regular sales. So um, just words to the wise, <laughs> make sure that you have that complete package, that the uh, MLS instructions, whatever agent or whatever property you're looking at, that you follow those directions to a T. I know there's uh, lots of agents in our area. They have instructions just like we do on how to fill out the contract and what the bank is looking for and making sure that that verbiage and all the forms are there um, for that complete package. So, and having said that, because that was really long-winded, <laughs> Other things that happen when you're working with a short sale is you put an offer in and you wait and you wait and you wait. And sometimes you're not hearing anything. So the communication on the short sale, we're going to let you know upfront how often we're going to be communicating with you and what kind of updates you're going to get. And um, you don't need to be calling me every day or every two days. Ask me, hey, Barb, you know, how's that short sale going? You know, did you hear anything from the bank? Because let me tell you, there is times that we're, we're not just going to hear anything, you know, so maybe on a Monday or Friday, whatever day it is, we're going to give you guys an, a, a weekly update. Hey, we haven't heard anything. Just let you know, haven't heard anything. Same old, same old, just waiting, you know, for the bank and or if there's things that are going on, we'll let you know about those too. So it is a process. It is very emotional. Um, it's not like a regular sale where you go in and you make your offer and the seller signs it. And next thing you know, you choose when you get to close. You don't get to choose when you close on these short sales. It's up to the bank. And when they do finally give you that uh, approval letter, you have 30 days. So if you're on a lease uh, and you're looking at a short sale, you know, coming down the pike, you know, or your lease is about to expire, I would strongly suggest that you go on a 30 day, a month to month, because if you're looking to get into one of these short sales, invest in one of them, then you're going to need the flexibility to be able to get out of that lease and close on a timely manner. Um, so that is a lot of stuff to be thinking about when you're buying a short sale. Um, there's also the, you have to take into consideration that these people are doing a short sale. It has been an emotional time for them. They, uh, the majority of them, they haven't paid their mortgage payment. So if they haven't paid their mortgage payment, do you really think that they're spending money on deferred maintenance or keeping their house up? You know, maybe they had the termites every year, or maybe they had the HVAC checked out every year. Um, you know, the last two years, they haven't made payments. They haven't had the termite inspection. They haven't had the HVAC guy coming over, checking on things. Um, maybe the ice makers making some weird noise or maybe just stop working all together and that's it. Like they just don't have ice. Um, and so there's a, just a laundry list of different things that I've seen in the past that have transpired. Um, things break, they don't fix them. Sinks get clogged up. They stop using them. Um, the property is being sold as is. So you've got to understand when you go look at a short sale, I would highly suggest that you bring somebody that can point different items out to you and ask you, hey, if this doesn't work or if this, you know, uh, bring a home inspector, if certain things don't work. Do you have the funds to go ahead and fix that item? Or is that a big concern of you, yours? Like you're on a budget. There's certain, you know, fees that you're going to be paying to, to buy the house to begin with. But then once you move in, there's going to be additional expenses because there are going to be deferred maintenance. Um, the, the house is being sold as is. Seller is not going to be fixing a darn thing. Uh, even if the appraisal appraiser comes back and says, hey, you know, this doesn't go through unless it gets fixed. Um, we're going to know that in advance 
for the most part. And if your type of loan, like say if you're getting a, a particular loan that their guideline says this, that, and the other must be working at the time of closing and it's not, then we're only gonna be accepting a cash offer on those particular properties. So it's not that you don't qualify, um, it's the loan that you have chosen to get um, that does not qualify to purchase uh, a certain type of short sale property. Um, that would go the same for these REO properties. So you got to know, you got to work with a good agent. You got to know exactly what you're getting into with these properties and um, even bring in a home inspector along with you or a contractor, you know, just another set of eyes um, when you go for that, that viewing, you know, the seller's not going to allow you like two or three hours at their home, but you do on the most part on average here in Virginia, you get about an hour um, showing time. So that is plenty of time to go through, take a look at the house. You know, if you, your family, uh, maybe have a contractor, um, they're going through, you're looking at if you like the house or not, and they're going through it. Yeah, it's going to cost you some money, but in the long run, it could save you lots of money because if you bought a house and you didn't know about some hidden thing that's not working, then it could cost you a lot more than just a couple hundred bucks for a home inspector or a contractor to come with you just as another set of eyes. Um, and then, oh yes, of course, we, we can't forget that the um, BPO um, and the shifting market, because as there's more uh, short sale homes coming on the market and the prices start shifting and the interest rates start going up and the supply and the demand and how the market just shifts overnight and the banks require a BPO. It's a broker price opinion. They either hire out from a third party. It's not the bank. It's some third party servicer that takes care of these uh, appraiser uh, appraisal or a BPO real estate professional agent. They are licensed in the state of Virginia. They don't necessarily have to be in a certain area, but they have to have access to that MLS. And they just might be only doing those broker price opinions. So it could be good or it could be bad. And, you know, I had a story one time, uh, I was so frustrated with the bank because the BPO um, came in. I thought it was great. I actually knew the agent who did it. They showed me the comps and stuff and the bank came back and they told that particular agent that, hey, um, we can't take this comp and we can't take that one. Go back and look for something else. So they were trying to change the valuation. And a long story short, it, it just it blew the deal out of the water, had to put the house back on the market, had to do some other things. And this short sale just took forever because the market just shifted enough and the BPO only lasts for so many weeks. And then they say, hey, I need another drive-by or I need another interior. And what that means is there's, um, whoever it is, it's the, the BPO agent or the appraiser, they're gonna go by and they're gonna take some outside pictures. They're gonna take pictures of the homes that are surrounding it so they can compare your condition of the outside to theirs to see you know, if it's being taken care of and the different maintenance and so forth and what the kind of overall neighborhood looks like. And then if it's an interior, they're gonna be taking pictures of your HVAC and all your appliances and the rooms um, and the condition of the home, if there's any damages and stuff. And then they're gonna make a little report and send it back to the bank. So sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. So being in a short sale, is just an emotional roller coaster. Once again, you know, working with a professional um, real estate agent, both as the selling agent and the listing agent is really a good thing So to know. So if you like this video, if it's been informative, go ahead and smash that like button for me. So it helps my algorithms and we can get more people um, informed about the short sales, the REOs and what the market's doing, the good, the bad, the ugly, and all the things in between. I'm Barbara Jennings. I'm your local real estate uh, professional, a short sale specialist, and I've got your back when you're moving and relocating and doing short sales uh, and REO properties um, in the greater Fredericksburg area. So until the next video, we'll see you guys next time.